We're looking in the book of Jude this morning. There are no chapters except just one chapter, I guess. So um, I can't tell you what chapter to turn to. Just turn to Jude. How about that? Man, I, I, I'm telling you, um, it, it's such a scary time like Mike was talking about that I, I dread even reading the newspaper. So what I started doing was getting a newspaper and putting it in the bottom of the parakeet cage to line it, and they took a look at it and dropped dead. <laughs> it, it's, it's terrible. It, it's like somebody made this stuff up. But it's really, uh, and, and just like the Bible said, where it's not coming, we're, it's here. We're right here. And I want you to know that the message that I'm going to bring you this morning, I spent a lot of restless nights struggling with the Lord on this one. And he was telling me, you will speak this. Because I'd love to bring a lighthearted sermon once in a while. But it's getting more and more difficult. What a, what a time we're living in. I remember back in the 80s, I was a DJ at this really big radio station. I'm not going to mention where it was at, but they did all programming all day long Christian programming and there was this guy that would get on there and he'd go on and on and on about this new world order the club of Rome the skull and bones and all this and that and I kind of sat back and laughed I thought he was a nut and then I found out later that every word that this man said was true every single I don't know where he got his information from because there was no internet but every single word. These are organizations that are dedicated to the overthrow of all nations to bring them all up under one umbrella with one world leader. And they are here now and they're out in the open and they don't even hide it. But I want you to understand that there's a generation coming up not only in America but in this world that are college trained. But they're trained that they came from apes. Yeah. I can prove scientifically that that is not so. And as a matter of fact, most of the scientists that are teaching that know that it's not so and will admit to it privately. But if they admit to it publicly, they will have to acknowledge that there is a God. They're not ready for that. They are trained in evolution. They're trained that there is no God and that the Bible is phony and that there's no such thing as, as absolutes and there are no real morals. And they call themselves progressive. They think they're progress progressing toward what? I hate to think. In a moment of sanity, just one little fleeting moment, Charles Manson, probably one of the most demon-possessed men that ever lived, said in a moment of clarity, he looked at the camera and he said, if you sing like my fire to your children all their life, when they grow up, they'll light your fire. Oh, yeah. And I know what he meant. Yeah. They do exactly as they're taught. And they're... they're <laughs> They're taught that right now, there's a, a, a generation coming up that the world owes them a living. My dad told me when I was growing up, boy, the world don't owe you nothing. You got to go get it for yourself. They laugh at godliness and they, they mock it as being something old-fashioned and ridiculous. And now, as a finished product... We have men running to the women's bathrooms while they're eating laundry detergent. That's progressive, brother, let me tell you. And they're asking Google for every decision they make in life. They holler at this disc on the table and they call it Lexa or Google. Uh, do I need to go to the bathroom now? And it goes, yes, you do. Lord have mercy. Where's people's common sense at? They got to ask a disc on the table for everything that they do now because they are that stupid. Oh my goodness. Heck, I beat that. I got me a GPS as a gift a couple of years ago. Now I have two women in the car telling me where I need to go. <laughs> 
It's a crazy world. Not only are they asking this thing for every decision in life, they run to a safe space every time they get their feelings hurt. And now we've learned through modern psychology how to blame inanimate objects for their problems. I'm just so surprised that every Sunday the 20 plus guns in this building haven't gone off and killed everybody. And now a lot of these people, young and old, have no problem walking into a school, a theater, or a church and killing everyone in sight. What, what, my goodness. Listen to what jo, uh, Jude, Jude said in verse 3. Beloved, I gave, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen to what he said. Jude did not have the luxury to even teach the people the basic precepts of the word as the devil was already at work back then trying to throw a wrench into everything that was going on in the local churches. He don't want you to get too deep in the word. And, and a lot of churches are having this problem today. They can hardly teach the deeper things of Christ anymore. That used to be popular, and I remember that. But now, people in the even in the churches have become so shallow that unless you're entertaining them or you have some sort of sensational guest, you couldn't get them to a Bible study at gunpoint. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you the truth, people. I'm not a popular person at all. Believe, believe that. I'm not popular at all. And you can tell by looking at everything around that I sure, Lord, ain't doing this for the money. I'm doing it to tell you the truth. Amen. On top of that, the whole world is in chaos. And to the extent that Bible-believing pastors have had to stop midstream and warn people about what's going on in the world so they won't get suckered in because even the news won't tell you the truth anymore. Everybody's telling you a lie to just perpetuate it. He said in verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, which were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to give you a straight up warning. Modern preachers and modern evangelists today are no longer crying out against ungodliness and sin. Nobody wants to hear that. That's old stuff right there. And we don't want to hear that. This would cause them to lose money and make people mad. Well, I'm good at losing money and I'm real good at making people mad too. So I must not be modern at all. Now these people are telling you that salvation is a license to sin. They're saying it in so many words. And, and we've got people even in our churches that are constantly plagued and they're having one problem after another and they're never able to see any sunshine at all in their life because they will not walk with God. They will not obey His Word and they will not separate themselves from the world and they still don't get why they're having so many problems. Let me tell you this. You try to follow God, you'll have problems enough, much less not following Him. And, 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 and when the problems come along, rather than get it taken care of and deal with it, they try to drown it out with every toxin on the market out there. And all the while, their pastors won't tell them that the only hope they have is the blood of Jesus Christ. He won't tell them that. He said, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. I want everybody in here to forget about who you're kin to. I want everybody in here to forget about who in your family knows the Lord because you will never ride the coattails of those that are saved to heaven. You will not. You have to do it on your own. When you stand before God, your parents won't be there, your spouse won't be there, your children won't be there, your brothers and sisters and your friends, you will stand there alone and give an account. 
And you better make sure that you are in the faith now because it will be too late to try to get it then. Make sure that you know you're saved. And he said even the angels, which kept not their first estate, they fell, but left their own habitation. He has reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day. The angels which violated God's commandment, there was a third of them, and they came down here and committed all kinds of atrocities, are now, according to the word of God, in the bottomless pit, wrapped in chains until the great tribulation starts. And the Bible said, then he will loose them on the earth to declare war on all those that are left behind here on the earth. And then he said here, and this is a, a real unpopular verse, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication, that's any form of sexual sin, whatever it may be, and going after strange flesh or setting forth or set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. There is not one single nation on this earth that has not gone the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. The world is obsessed with sexual perversion, completely obsessed, and they'll punish anyone that says this is wrong. I've never seen anything like it. Did you know that anybody in here even know that God created sex? He did. And you know what? He made it awesome. And if it was a chore, we wouldn't be here, would we? You know how trifling and lazy men are. If we thought it was a chore, it just wouldn't happen. We wouldn't populate the earth. God made it that way. He created sex. It's a gift from God. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be afraid of. He created it to be celebrated by a husband and wife. And now people have complete... You know that the, the devil has a cheap imitation for everything God uh, makes? He, he says, oh, you don't need that. That's the best thing for you. Yeah, you can have this, you can have that, you can do it this way, you can do that, and this and that. And, and he always has a cheap imitation. You ever seen them cheap imitations that used to be in the store before? They, they don't quite taste as good as the original product and they fall apart much quicker than the original product and they're inferior? That's the devil. We have misused that gift from God to the point where you're laughed at if you don't misuse it. Do you believe that God will allow that to go on forever? Likewise, verse 8, also these dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Jude called them dreamers. King James inserted the word filthy so you'd understand that's not a noble title. Our country is now calling anybody that breaks the law of the land, a dreamer. Well, man, we got a prison full of dreamers. They dreamed all kinds of awful things that they wanted to do, and they did it. Anyone who stands up against moral values nowadays that is given to us by God is, is called a dreamer. Watch, they're going to expand the meaning of that term very shortly to anybody that wants to stand up against anything. Jude said they defile the flesh, they speak out against God's authority, and they mock God's glory. Yet Michael the archangel, contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, did not even bring against him a railing accusation, but said the Lord rebuked thee. Anybody want to defeat Satan, all you've got to do is simply say the Lord rebuke you, Satan. Let God handle something that big. Let God handle something. To, don't you think for one moment that you got power enough to get up in the devil's face and do battle with him? Yeah. Don't ever think that. He wants you to think that you can just wade right in and you're going to get your head cut off. You let God do it. You say the Lord rebuke you, Satan. And watch what he can do. Then he said, but these people speak evil of things which they know not, but what they know naturally as, Bruce be as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Today, on this earth, and I've watched these people do the interviews on the street. They walk up to people asking questions. 
I hate to say this, but we got the most ignorant people in this world walking the earth right now. We've got more college grads. I'm a college grad, so I can say it. Educated idiots. A highbrow is a person who is educated above his intelligence. People know nothing more than what a brute beast. They're like a pit bull with a PhD. What good does that do? If you don't have any common sense, and if you don't have the sense that God gave you, all the degrees in the world won't amount to a hill of beans. Let me say this to parents. For God's sake, quit sending your children to college and to school thinking that they're going to raise your kids for you. For God's sake, stop it. Discipline your children. Teach your children right from wrong. Pray for God's guidance. And if you don't know how to do it, go to some old-timey grandma and ask her how to do it. Kills me to see these talk shows on TV and a lot of these modern college professors telling us how to raise kids and they ain't even got one. Oh, let me tell you something. I volunteered at a local Christian school back many years ago when I still had my energy to teach a K-5 class one day to substitute for the teacher. Boy, I did not know that gun was loaded. There were 25 five-year-olds in there and I was in there by myself. This is no lie, I kid you not. By lunchtime, (laughs) I looked like one of them professors with the hair standing out like that. And I just come from off of the police force, the the sheriff's department, so I could handle any kind of monster that you could imagine. But I was sitting there at the desk at lunchtime, just about ready to have a nervous breakdown. And a little five-year-old boy comes up and sits on my knee and looks at me and he said, I want my mama. And I looked at him and I said, I want my mama too. (laughs) I I did that. I'm not kidding totally confused like you're not supposed to want your mom and he went and sat back down and got quiet it scared him (laughs) raising children is not for the faint of heart but it better be done right because they will produce just what you put in them take your children to church Get them in the house of God every chance you get. Don't you think for one moment that all these extracurricular activities that you can get your children involved in will amount to a hill of beans when they stand before a holy God and give an account of what they did with their life and you give an account of how you raised them. I know that's not popular. But when your child goes buck wild on you and has no discipline in the word and no godly training and breaks your heart night and day, will the knowledge that you involve them in everything but God's house bring you any comfort? People, we are not of this world. Please understand that. And neither are your children and make sure they understand that. The devil wants your children. And he wants those kids way worse than he wants you. Because you're a little bit harder to deal with. But that child has an open mind. And anything that goes in it that's poison will come right back out eventually. This is an emergency people that I'm talking about. All these movie stars and singers and sports figures and Santa Claus and Easter Bunny. Is that all you got? Is that all they're looking up to? Whatever happened to godly daddies? Whatever happened to godly mamas? Why don't your child want to be like you? Instead of some rap star or something like that. You tell your children about Jesus. And not only do you tell your children about Jesus, but you quit acting like a hypocrite. You start living like Jesus in front of them. Get your child under the teaching of the word. Jude said, woe unto them. 
For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the arrow of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Corey. I'll explain what he means by this. People are flocking right now to false prophets. False preachers. Who preach about the great things of your flesh. Health, wealth, and prosperity. I look around and I see a lot of people that just ain't gotten on with that program because you're old, you're sick, and you're broke. Hallelujah. I'm right in there with you. And then they got this kingdom now doctrine that if we get better and better, we can just bring the kingdom in right now. No, you will not. Jesus looked at Pontius Pilate and said, My kingdom is not of this world, but one day you'll see me coming on the clouds with power and glory, but not now. This world's got to go through a whole lot more before that happens. And we can't bring it in. Jesus is the only one that's going to bring it in. Might as well get that out of your head. These are spots in your feasts of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves with their fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about with wind, uh, of winds, trees whose fruit withered without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. They're walking dead men. And they don't even know it. And that's the bad thing about it. I could go on and on and on and on and on. He even talks about crooked politicians in verse 16. But I think we all know what that is. It's enough of them. Folks, what he's trying to tell us is the devil is on every corner yelling just as loud as he can, trying to distract everybody that he can, trying to stop everybody that he can. And I'm telling you, folks, there is only one way to do it, and that is to obey the Word of God. You can have victory. The Bible says that people can overcome by the blood of Christ and by the word of their testimony. This is your sword right here. This is your weapon right here. If you start learning this and you start walking in the way of this right here and obeying it and believing it, you can have victory in spite of all the garbage that's going on in the world. Folks, we're supposed to be a shining light. And we're not supposed to be hid under a cover. We're supposed to be out there shining for everybody to see us. And how are they going to see us if we've been absorbed into the world and doing all the same things in the world and nobody can see the light and as a result everybody's walking in darkness. That's a shame. People are watching each and every one of you that claim to know Christ. And they may not even have a Bible. You are their Bible. And they want to see what's different about you. Don't let Satan deceive you. That's his whole goal in life. Is to fool us into a devil's hell. He knows that's where he's going and he wants company. Don't, don't give him that. Give your life to Christ today. Walk in the way that he... I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Serving the devil is a whole lot harder than serving God. Because it's never enough with the devil. He wants a little more and a little more and a little more until finally you're trapped in a hole and you can't get out. Jesus said, my burden is light and my yoke is easy. Because he did all the work. He paid all the price. You can't earn that salvation. He bought it for you. It's up to you to accept it and take it into your life. And let him run the show instead of you. Anybody ever tried to run their own show before? Tried to do it your way and it flopped? If I had four arms, I'd put them up. Do it his way. Because that way never fails. <clears throat> Folks, I'm going to ask you if you would stand with your heads bowed for just a moment. What I'm going to give you right now is the big moment of truth. Do you want him and all that he promises you right now? Or do you want to say maybe another day, Dave? Maybe another day. Just like Mike was saying, those precious 
children, 17 of them at that school, had no idea that they didn't have another day. They could, they, they're going to live forever when they're that young. We might think so, but you never know when your time is up and when you're called. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't turn him away. He loves you. I don't care what you've done, who you are, or what. It doesn't matter. Jesus died for you, and he can save you and change you and make a new creature out of you right now. But you've got to trust him. You've got to trust him, and he'll do it. And so this morning, if there's one here that does not know Christ as their Savior, let him be your Savior. Come down here and let one of us pray with you. We love you. We are glad you're all here because we want to share the gospel with you and how you can have a successful, victorious life. Maybe you are saved, but you're struggling with things. And tell me in here who isn't. God can fix that too. All you've got to do is trust him. Let's pray together about this this morning so you can walk out of here with strength. Maybe God is calling you for some other reason. Well, come and tell us about it and come down here. Can I have some prayer warriors to stand around the altar? And, 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 folks, if you have a need, just step out from where you are while Candy sings. If you're scared, take somebody by the hand. They'll come with you. And these people down here are all standing ready to pray with you if you have a need this morning. But would you please, as Candy saying, step out and make these things right with God today. Walk out of here knowing that if no matter what happens, you'll stand in the presence of God if something happened to you. Would you come? These people are ready to pray for you. Just take one of them by the hand and say, please pray with me and tell them what's wrong. Tell them what's going on. They'll be glad to. Would you come today? Would you, would you come? Come every soul by sin oppressed. Do not be ashamed and do not be afraid.